Welcome everyone to this conversation on Wicklow Head Lighthouse as part of Heritage Week. My name is Grania Shaffrey uh, from Shaffrey Architects and I'm joined by Damien Condon, Condon of Calix Restoration and we're going to be having a conversation about some work that we started for uh, uh, Irish Landmark Trust and uh, it's been funded by the Heritage Council. Um, the, the project we're doing goes back to a, a project that my practice uh, was involved in 25 years ago, hence the title Revisiting Wicklow Head Lighthouse. The Irish Landmark Trust, it was the first of the Irish Landmark Trust's projects. Uh, the Irish Landmark Trust was established in 1992 uh, with a focus on restoring interesting and important architectural buildings, but that may not have uh, received the attention of other of our buildings around the country and were challenging in terms of use. And the focus was on repairing the buildings, but giving them a use that allowed people to enjoy them, but didn't exert excessive demand on, on requirements to adapt them and to change them for contemporary needs. So hence the holiday let model, uh, which is based on the UK Landmark Trust. It's a ter terrific organisation and it has, a, a apart from safeguarding uh, this important part of our, our heritage, uh, which it has been doing now for over 25 years, it has an educational remit. So a lot of the work done on these projects has produced a lot of knowledge and Irish Landmark Trust are, are very keen that that knowledge is disseminated. So our discussion this evening is part of that. The project is important for us. It's important, as I say, for me, because it was actually, it was the first project for Irish Landmark Trust, but it was the last project that my mother, Maura Shaffrey, worked on uh, and really it is, it, is, it is her work that we're re revisiting now. I'm going to uh, talk to you um, initially just briefly a little bit of an introduction to the lighthouse itself. And it's quite a remarkable uh, structure in a very remarkable location. Um, I'm going to talk uh, uh, a little bit about the, the, the work that was done in the 1990s early adaptive reuse under the umbrella of conservation. Then really what the revisiting the project in 2021 is about. And then with Damien, uh, we'll have a conversation really about how, what our emerging thoughts are towards uh, a strategy for, for, for repair. And as I talk, I hope maybe the, the context and the purpose of the work we're doing um, will, become, will become clearer. The lighthouse itself, and these are our, our plans on, on the left is the, is the current uh, location map and on the right an aerial. And in a way we talk about Wicklow Head Lighthouse, it's one of four that occupied uh, the headland. There are three surviving today. So really in itself, when you talk about it uh, as a lighthouse, it's got a very interesting history. The lighthouse today, that we see and, and can visit and stay in dates from 1781. And it was one of two lighthouses constructed at the time by the revenue uh, commissioners, very early and very interesting structures. And they built two in order to kind of maximize their, their functionality uh, as being landmarks from the sea uh, on the headland. Um, however, really from the get-go, the lighthouse um, didn't provide the kind of safe light uh, that was re required. And indeed the inner one, the, the one which survives today, uh, was, was known to get shrouded by fog, low-lying fogs and mists. So it wasn't always visible uh, from, from the sea. Um, in 1816, the second and the lower lighthouse was removed. And there were two new lighthouses were constructed uh, alongside the, the older lighthouse. And that was constructed by uh, the, what was, had been the ballast board, 
became the Corporation for Preserving and Improving Dublin Port. Uh, um, the original lighthouse was con constructed by the Revenue Commissioners and designed by an engineer called John Trail. So 1816, uh, it was obsolete effectively as a lighthouse and replaced with two, two new lighthouses. Um, in 1836, the old lighthouse was damaged by lightning. It was struck by lightning and quite severely damaged, uh, it appears from the records. However, interestingly, the, the Corporation for Preserving and Improving Dublin Port, which was responsible for the lighthouses along the Irish coastline, felt that it was still a useful landmark from the sea. So it still had a role as a, as a landmark and they repaired it, they decided to retain it, and they put a brick dome on it on, in 1866. However, all of this is, 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 is interesting to know because in some ways it's been exposed, built on exposed site, and been exposed for quite a, a, a long period of time. This map dates from around 1847, and it shows, it's circled in red, the old lighthouse, and then the two lighthouses of 1816. And uh, you can see all of the ancillary uh, uh, property around the, the, the upper and the lower lighthouses for accommodation. And looking in closer, this would be an early 20th century uh, Ordnance Survey map. Again, it's not maybe the subject of today's discussion, but what, what is um, noticeable is the is, is in a way that this had become a place of industrial heritage with a gasometer at this point disused. So the lighthouse uh, was also a place where there was gas being, being made and uh, helping to obviously fuel, fuel the lighthouse. And just zooming out from this uh, historic map is interesting to look. I circled in green just at the very top of the, of the screen if you can see, it's a little bit um, blurred, the image, but it says Lime Kiln Bay. And so one of the questions one might have would be the sources of lime for the historic mortars and renders. We don't know if that's it or not, but, but when, when Damien and myself talk in a few minutes, we might, we might come back to this. So the 1990s project, and uh, this is really a very brief run through it. These are photographs taken from I think maybe 1995-96. Landmark Trust was founded in 1992 and this project was under, was commenced really around 1996 and finished in 97. So it's very uh, uh, strong looking, uh, formidable structure, an octagon, uh, tapering and stepped, um, going up for nearly over 30 metres in height. So it's, it's, it's a, hot, a tall six-storey uh, structure, eight sides. You can see there on the left-hand side the, the, the brick dome um, and the openings had all been infilled. But again, I suppose the point to, to notice is its exposed location. And with eight sides facing eight different aspects, obviously you've got the prevailing winds, the sea and the salt and all of those harsh aspects of the of the uh, Irish climate, not the west coast, but the east coast does have its moments as well. And here's a close up of the brick dome on, on the left, beautifully made. I mean, it's it's remarkable, uh, you, you know, it, when, when one looks at this 130 years since it had been put in place and brick, you know, is, a, is can be a soft material, but beautifully formed and um, these two images. And again, the uh, fine dressed granite coin stones, coping stone, and then the infill stone, which is more of a, 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 a shaly uh, stone. Um, and this slide sh uh, shows some of the images of the interior. So really what we're looking at is a shell, um, how it was, it was subdivided into floors, obviously historically, with a staircase. We have no information on what that might have been. Um, so in, in, in a sense, the, the reconstruction was uh, an interpretation and an adaptation. But you can see fragments of, of plaster internally. 
But again, one has to think about the primary purpose of this lighthouse was to act as a landmark from the sea and maybe less uh, of a priority were the internal conditions for the people occupying it. Again, probably occupying it for a short period of time. This was not a long-term home for, for anyone. So the conditions inside were, inside were not necessarily the priority of the, of the original engineers and designers. And these are just some drawings again from the 1990s and maybe to look at the, the cross section here through the, through, the, um, through the lighthouse and to show the idea of the, the new structure being inserted with the, with the six floors of rooms and then a new stairs, a steel stairs, which wraps around the interior of the, of the lighthouse. And at each floor level, there's a landing accessing the, the floor, the little three-dimensional uh, early CAD three-dimensional model uh, shows that uh, well. And I don't expect anyone to be able to see in detail the, this detail at the top, but suffice to say, and this is maybe one of the reasons or, or, or for revisiting is uh, this was, as I mentioned, Landmark Trust's first project. It was done in a very limited budget. It was a remarkable feat for it to happen at all. And perhaps maybe when we stand back, and we all stood back after and said, this was not an easy first project to take on. So, so the, the achievement was, was remarkable. The budget was limited and there were changes to the original design and specification, which in a way had to happen to enable the project to happen. And maybe part of what we're revisiting is part of maybe revisiting some of what might have happened. Um, and that's the life of projects like, like this. But the detail there is just showing that the original intention was to finish the copper dome or the brick dome in a copper finish. Um, that was not feasible um, uh, uh, as, as we'll see for budgetary reasons. These are just some of the floor plans and um, just some color sketches early on. Uh, the floor is above ground floor. Effectively, each room has a, each floor has a room. So you have a bedroom at first floor, a bathroom, then a bedroom above that on the third floor, then the living room floor on the fourth floor. And then in the top, and interestingly, because of the, the fire officer, the greatest fire risk required that the kitchen would be at the very top, 109 steps to the top, which anybody who's, who's done them will, will remember, keeps you fit. So um, it is a place to stay for people who don't mind walking up to the top with a bag of potatoes, but it's worth it uh, when, when you get there. Again, these kind of projects, uh, buildability is a challenge. And uh, to put up a scaffold to carry out the work in itself is a, is a project in itself. And thinking about the exposure of that scaffold to the elements, safety during work, not uh, damaging the historic structure through the fixings. So designing the fixings for that scaffold in a way that it doesn't damage any of the, of the sensitive uh, material, particularly the dressed stones. And really by the time you've gone to all that effort to put the scaffold up and indeed cost, you want to do as, as much as you can um, with, with that while it's up. So again, that is something maybe Damien and myself will think about uh, wh wh when we're planning this next phase of works. And just the image on the right there shows the dome and as I mentioned, that um, our budget ultimately didn't extend to finishing the, the, the roof in copper. So instead, it has a render coat, uh, which, is, which is quite a demand uh, for a structure like this, exposed structure, to, to withstand and be a primary weathering surface. So this is the, an image of the uh, tower on completion. And the other aspect of the 1990s project really that we're, we're revisiting now is the external render and will be the focus of our, our discussion. And again, um, the original intention was to put on a, a to, to reinstate the historic render with a three coat render. Um, 
we weren't able to do that. Uh, again, the budget was 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 challenging, so we had to adapt the final specification, and it ended up just localized patching of the render. And probably this early photograph, you can probably see some of the areas, the lighter areas of or the darker areas of patching, maybe in the lighter areas of the original render, which was deemed sufficient to um, to to survive until such time, which is now when we can go back and, and, and revisit. And again, looking up close at it, I mean, one of the very kind of nice aspects in one way has been the aesthetic finish. It's a thrown final finish using a, 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 a local mixed aggregate. The detail on the right shows that the finish of the render in some ways blends into the granite of the, of the stone surrounds. Um, the original specification was, and the, again, one must remember this was the early days of the Lyme revival. Uh, my mother, Maura, had been slaking Lyme on a previous project because there was no uh, commercially available Lyme in Ireland at, that, at the time when, when in, uh, she was working on King House. Here it was beginning to be, but it was still very difficult. It was difficult to get contractors to use Lyme. That has all absolutely changed. And with the likes of people like Damien out there now, um, you have the craftspeople advancing the knowledge through the projects. So again, the, the mix for this was a mix of Lyme. There was a, a percentage of cement, which, and a, and then aggregate. So it was one, one, six, and uh, was was the mix. Um, internally, and these are just images of the of the project on completion, entering into the entrance hall. You can see in the middle there the new steel stairs, which was designed as a contemporary stairs, had to get us up, had to meet building regulations, had to arrive at the different levels, um, and minimize the amount of space it took so that you had the maximum space for the, for the accommodation and the living accommodation within. But you can imagine these rooms, which are so lovely with views, in some instances, the living room here on the top right hand side, room, views out to every orientation of the sun, east, west, uh, north and, and south. So it makes for a very particular uh, climate or character. So coming then to revisiting in 2021, and again, thanks to funding from the Heritage Council, what our project is, is to do a, 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 an examination, survey, inspect and research and to develop a, a recommendation, a conservation report, which sets out a roadmap for what works are we recommending that need to be done to improve the weathering and the internal conditions inside the lighthouse. And again, one must remember that um, we're starting off with a challenging location. We're starting off with, a, with, a, with a, a challenging structure and height. And we're adapting it to use where people will be staying in it, albeit for short periods of time, but there's an expectation on certain levels of comfort. And we're dealing with thick, thick walls. So what we, we decided when uh, Irish Landmark Trust uh, invited us back to look at this, uh, that as part of the uh, analysis stage and the planning stage, that it would be really, really good to work with a knowledgeable, experienced uh, practitioner, craftsman. And that's how we were very lucky to find Damien uh, to, to work with us on this. So it's a collaborative project. So this is us in July, a month ago, up inspecting the, the, the lighthouse. And parts of the render that looked all right when you knocked in detail and, 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 and touched them, this is the need for the hoist to hammer them in. And here were bits that sounded a little hollow. So you could see where the render had delaminated from the back surface and where water would get in. And there was evidence looking up close of cracks the water is trapped in behind and then um, it creates problems. Or on the right hand side where you can see a lot of the uh, render has worn away and weathered away and this would be on the very exposed uh, 
uh, surfaces. Again, the windows uh, challenging the traditional timber windows, single pane sash windows. In one of them, there's some lead, lead dressing, which has provided certain protection, uh, but, but again, uh, uh, challenges. And internally, I'm not sure if it's clear on the image on the left, but if you can see some of the condensation on the windows. So this is also part of the, part of the challenge, the immensely thick walls, uh, um, which Damien will, will talk about how moisture gets trapped in those. And then looking up into the inside of the, of the dome, and these are just patches where uh, previous inspections were carried out. And in fact, found that the dome, the roof was actually performing quite well but we still uh, maybe have, have questions. And just the image on the right showing the challenge at ground level, uh, sometimes the condensation requires temporary de dehumidification. So here we are taking samples off the, off the, off the, the plaster. Uh, and just the image on the left, it's not Wicklow Lighthouse, but really it's just an illustration. This was some of the materials that we gathered together on a previous project to replicate historic mortars. These mortars can be quite complex and sophisticated and really are a, 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 it's a testimony to the sophistication of the historic builders and their understanding of the, of the materials. These are the, um, the, we took samples uh, from different parts from the new Finnish coat, which would be the 1990s. The question is whether we have the original Finnish the original bedding mortars perhaps, and the pointing mortars. And uh, we'll talk now with Damien shortly about what we'll do with those and maybe some of the information we might learn. And are we going to be making a historic replica or are we looking to maybe a new, a new uh, a mix uh, which might build on our knowledge of lime mortars and the site. So these are the, the, the aspects we want to uh, visit, the roof, um, you know, do we revisit the original detail, the extend, external render, the assessing analysis, sampling, mortar, and then implementing, internal render, we might talk a bit, and then other, other elements, the windows, we might get stuck into that in today's discussion, but are for consideration, and maybe there are things we could do there uh, which might uh, improve thermal efficiency, which is something we all have to think about in every project we do now, reducing our carbon footprint. And then management solutions. I mean, recognizing that there's a limit to what we can achieve uh, in, in these works uh, without maybe really altering the uh, historic building uh, beyond what we want. So I'm finished this now. I'm going to come out of this and Damien, um, lovely that you're, 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 you're here um, and uh, um, it's great that you can join me on this uh, for Heritage Week and maybe I might just hand over to you and you might just say a few words about your own background and your knowledge on, on, on Lyme and your interest in Lyme. So I'll hand over to you now.